Um, all right, I'm with Kaz Gralla. Kaz, uh, you all are getting ready to go to, to Langley Speedway. You were there last year for the very first time, I believe. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. What do you What do you feel about Langley Speedway? How does it hit you? What's it like? I love the track. I mean, I, I've raced there a few times now. My, I think my first race ever there was the K&N race last year, but after that I did a late model race or two as well, late model stock car that is. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that was a really fun race for me last year. That was my first ever top five in the K&N series. Um, and I started, I want to say, about 18. So I, I came a long way for that fifth place finish too, and it was a hard fought one. I was, I started sixth on a green white checkered and battled on the outside oh, for the cool. fifth spot. Um, so that that was really cool. Got to go to Tech for the first time in K&N. So <laughs> that, that track is definitely um, up there for one of my more memorable races last year. So I'm, I'm ready to go back. Okay. If I remember the his history of Langley Speedway correctly, and, and it goes all the way back to the Cup Series and everything, but from the for the for the track itself, while there is a front and a and and and, and a back straightaway, you don't spend a lot of time going straight at Langley Speedway, do you? At all, I, it's basically a circle. Um, I usually compare it. It's kind of like hickory. It's like a smooth hickory. Not really too many bumps there. And there's not really any banking, if, if any. Uh, it might be like two degrees. <laughs> but it's basically a flat track, a flat little circle. And uh, that's why you'll see the cars running a really weird line in the race. Um, last year we used to run middle to bottom down the straightaway there just to try to straighten it up. Because the more you're turning down the straightaway, the more you're leaning on those right side tires. Okay. It's a 175 lap race there. So you really got to keep those right side tires under the car. I believe we didn't even have a halfway break last year. So it's the same four tires, all 175 laps. So you really got to straighten out that straightaway. As well as, people will just dive bomb you down the straightaway there since it is so curved. Someone will hold it straight and stick it right under you and take your line away into the next corner. So you see everybody running real low and it looks weird, um, but th that's what most people... <laughs> That's what most people will probably be doing. Okay. Race fans, I don't believe, understand the tires in, in, in the situation of how they're mounted on a, on a race car. And, and what you just talked about has a lot to do with how a tire is mounted to get you the best possible speed. Um, they're not straight up and down, are they? No, not at all. Um, even the rear tires are skewed a little bit, but the front tires... It's called a camber, and they're really, really leaned over. That's why when you look at race cars, when they're stopped in the pits, they look really odd because the front tires lean all the way over. But once you get on the track, um, the way the front end geometry works and the springs and everything compresses, those tires do actually straighten out. And so the goal is that through the corner, you have as much tire touching the track as possible to get the most grip possible. And then down the straightaway, you get a little advantage as well because when the front end isn't compressed, less of the tire is touching the track, and that's less friction slowing down your straight line speed down the straightaways. So camber is really important to race cars, and it, it definitely makes the tires wear a little bit more because you are getting the maximum, we call it, contact patch of the tire touching the racetrack, and that makes it wear more, obviously. Given the history of Langley Speedway, the fact that it goes all the way back almost to the start of, of NASCAR racing, and, 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 and Richard Petty used to race there, Dale Earnhardt Sr. raced there, some of the hugest names in the sport, Bobby Allison, Yarborough, etc. What's it like to go to a track that has that much history. I mean, you're a young man. What's it like? I mean, it just it makes you want to win that much more. We, we go to 
a few different tracks like that. Um, New Smyrna is right near Daytona. There's a lot of history there. Bowman Gray, of course, I believe is the oldest NASCAR sanctioned track in America. Um, and Langley's another really historic track as well. So that just makes you want to add your name to that list of drivers because um, that, that would be really cool. And of course, you've got big tracks like Dover, Bristol, Iowa. You just want to add your name to the winner list there because they're fast tracks, they're fun tracks, and they're current NASCAR tracks. But it's a whole different thing to be able to add your name to a long historic list of names. Yeah, you're, you're right. Now, uh, the, the other thing about Langley Speedway is it's right across the street from a very historic situation, and that's the wind tunnel that NASA used. Um, I, I understand you haven't been to the wind tunnel yet, but do you, have you kind of peered at it and say, oh, I want to get in there? Yeah, that, that would be definitely really cool. I've never seen a car in a wind tunnel. Um, hopefully, sometime soon, I'll get to see one because that would be that'd be awesome. But it's kind of ironic because aerodynamics on a race car at Langley probably don't really matter because it's such a small, tight little track, and yet the the huge wind tunnel right across the street was the first in NASCAR. So that's that's kind of funny. It's probably more useful for Daytona or for us Dover, but not so much for Langley Speedway. <laughs> We're trying to make grip there, not arrow. Okay, so so back to Langley. With arrow not being a determining factor on such a short track, what 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 in your car gives you the opportunity to pass people, to stay out front, to win? It's really going to be all about forward drive. And if your car doesn't turn the center well, you're not going to have good forward drive. So you've got to get both of those things working together. You need to have your car rotating the center. you got to have drive off. Now there, it's our longest race of the year, 175 laps. Not distance-wise, but lap-wise, that's our longest. So that's going to be the most corners on our tires all year long. And so the race pace is going to start out a little bit conservative. And at that point, the way you're going to pass people is forward drive because most everybody's cars are going to be turning the center but by the end of the race with all those laps on the tires it's going to be very difficult to get the car to turn the center because the tires are going to be very hot and then of course that makes it really difficult to get under people down the straightaway so you really got to conserve your tires there and be careful but at the same time being such a tight little track it's very difficult to pass people and it's a little bigger than Bowman Gray so you don't really want to move people out of the way. Contact's not really the way to do it there. You want to get under people clean, and that's really, really difficult on a tight little track. So you got to balance conserving your tires with keeping track position. You don't want to fall outside the top five or top ten. It's going to be hard to get back up there. Um, depending on where we qualify, of course, our strategy will be different, but if we can qualify in the top five or top ten, hopefully we can hang around the top five for most of the race, and then when it's go time, we'll be already there, ready to go. You say the word balance, as many drivers do on a regular basis. How do you decide lap to lap to lap what the balance is? Does it come to your mind instantly? I mean, it's kind of tough. Some of that you're born with, just being able to feel out the car and feel what it wants and what it doesn't want to take at that time. Uh, another part of it is experience, and that's something that I guess I have at this point in the K&N series. A lot of drivers are in their rookie year. This is my second year. Right. But still, this is only my second year. And this is only my third year in stock cars in general. So there's plenty of drivers in the series that have much more experience than I do. And, and being able to feel out when to, to be conservative on the tires and when to go is something that takes a little bit of time. And I think I'm starting to figure that out a little bit. But that's not an easy thing to do at all. Langley's a one-day show, correct? It is. It is? Okay. How long do you really wish it would be? How many times would you like to practice out there before you go racing? 
I mean, I always like to have a four-hour practice the day before. I feel like that always works well. We had that a lot last year, but this year with the no testing rule by NASCAR, a lot of those tests have been taken away, um, almost all of them. So it's just a one-day show with practice in the morning. Ideally, we would have four hours starting an hour before the time we qualify and going past dark the day before. That okay. would be great because we could really see the temperature and the sun being where it's at during qualifying and where it's at for the race. We can really see how the car handles because the temperature, the sunlight, all of that really affects how the car handles on the track. Um, so a night practice the day before, the evening to night practice would be perfect. But we don't have that this week. We've just got a morning practice to try to figure it all out. So yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to be quick and efficient. But uh, at least everybody's in the same boat. It, we've all got the same circumstance there. Um, now, if everyone else had four hours on Friday and we didn't, that would be a disadvantage for sure. sure. But we've all got morning practice, so we're just going to have to make do with it, and I'm sure we will for sure. Okay. So, and, and I know Langley being a great race and everything, one day, but it's one day in your entire racing career, and when the race is over, the checkered flag falls, it's on to the next race. What's, what's your next month look like? A uh, pretty busy one, that's for sure. Um, so I've got Langley this weekend, and then we go straight from Langley to Sonoma for a couple days, and then I'm racing in the Canaan West race out there in Sonoma uh, next Saturday. Then straight from Sonoma, we go back to Charlotte really quick, and then right out to Columbus, Ohio for the next Canaan East event. And then overnight, the night of the Canaan East event, I'm flying back home here because we've got a super late model race on Loudoun um, the next day. And I'm actually going to miss the practice day for that because they have practice there the day of the k and race in Ohio. So I'll be at a slight disadvantage there, but I'm just so excited for that race because the super late model has been so fun this year. It feels so, so, so fast. And they're putting us unrestricted on the mile track in New Hampshire Motor Speedway. So we are going to be flying there. We've got the same power as a K&N car, which is only 75 horsepower less than the Cup cars are this year. Um, and we weigh much less. We have much better brakes, much lower center of gravity. So, I mean, we're going to be cornering there fast, and we'll be flying down the straightaway. So I, I'm pumped. And it'll kind of be like a little test for the K&N race at Loudoun there two weeks later with no testing allowed here. They don't have a rule on no racing, so... Uh, <laughs> definitely allowed to go out there and race in the super and that'll just be a little good track experience for me for two weeks later of course the setup doesn't transfer and it's a different team but just for me to get on the track will be a little advantage because most of the other drivers won't have seen the track for a whole year since the K&N race there last year okay this may be a tough question as a driver are you more comfortable with a car that just lets you go as fast as you can possibly go, or are you more, or, or or are you equally as comfortable even when you're in a car where there's rules that set limits on what you can really do with that car from an ability standpoint? Well, I guess it does depend because all races, even if you have to conserve at some point, they're all going to end with a, a really hard last 25 or 30 laps. So you've always got that to look forward to at the end of the race. But to me, it doesn't really make one difference um, if we're conserving or not. Like Bowman Gray, for instance, it's a small little track. We've got plenty of grip there. You're not really conserving. You're pretty much going the whole 150 laps. And that's fun because you get to drive as hard as you can for 150 laps, but then at a track like Greenville Pickens, which I know is a little frustrating for a lot of us because it does wear tires so much, but at a track like uh, like Iowa, for instance, it's not like Greenville where you got to conserve a ton. However, if you go as hard as you can for the first 75 laps, you're not going to be able to for the second 75 laps. So you do have to be careful a little bit, and I do like that because then you're working two things. You're working your brain 
brain and your body in terms of speed and conserving and mental stability there. So you do have to conserve a little bit at Iowa. That's that's my favorite race. You get a little bit of both. You get some strategy and you get some just straight up digging as hard as you can towards the end. So I, I do like racing those races and that's probably what uh, the next few races are going to be coming up for me. Um, even on a road course at, at Sonoma, you're going to have to be conserving a little bit, but it's a different way. Um, there you're shifting a lot, so you do have to be careful, make sure all your shifts are clean because you can't win the race on lap five by you know going too fast, screwing up and missing a gear, and all of a sudden you've got a blown motor. So you have to be conscientious of what you're doing there and, and be careful. Okay. Finally. about road courses and ovals, is a road course more mentally challenging than a, than a, than a road course? I mean, than, a, than an oval? Is I would say practice on a road course is more mentally challenging, especially if it's your first time there, because instead of learning two ends of the track, you're learning however many corners there are, like, you know, 10, 11, 12 corners there. Um, and that's definitely a lot more difficult because it's just as hard as learning an oval corner except you've just got way more of them. And the other part is if you're not the fastest car there and you're chasing somebody else's lap time, there's so many places that that could be that it's it's very difficult to find exactly where you can make up that time. You know, And, and it is a balance between overdriving. If you think you can make it up in turn one but you're actually losing your time in turn three and you're trying to make it up in turn one, mm -hmm. you can overdrive the car, you're going to end up even slower. So it makes it very, very difficult in practice. However, in the race, I would say a road course is more physically taxing than an oval, rather than mentally, because at that point, once again, you've just got so many turns, and a lot of the time you're going really fast down the straightaways, and you're slowing down a good bit for the corners, and when, when you do that, you end up having to hustle the car through those corners and it, it ends up taking even more out of you rather than on an oval where you're going fast down the straights and still fast in the corners. There's not as much hustling. It's more finesse. It sounds like every single one of the upcoming events excites you in every single way and that's probably important as a, as a driver to make sure that everything excites you no matter where you're at or what you're in, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm pumped for the next few weeks. It's, it's going to be busy, but that's exactly how I like it. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Stan. Thank you.